Well hello and welcome, my name is Peter Waters G3OJV and this is the Heil Pro 7 he headset. Now I was asked to do a review on this headset and it's somewhat difficult to do reviews on headsets because I can't let you know what it sounds like, you can't actually hear what it sounds like and I can't really explain exactly how it feels to wear them because you know, headsets are almost as much about wearing them and what they feel like as it is about um, using them. But before we take a closer look at this Heil Pro 7 headset, let's um, just think about headsets down there and why we need them. You know, back in the old days, headsets or earphones as they were called then, I think, um, they were the standard method of listening to radio. I mean in the early days um, you were sort of used to sit around the crystal set with uh, headsets, uh, at least that's what I'm told. <laughs> um, but uh, the headsets of today are entirely different because they are complementary to your radio station. Now um, this one is quite an advanced design. Um, in fact, I'm, I'm quite impressed with this, but we'll talk about this a bit later. This is quite an advanced design. In the early days, they were very crude and they were uncomfortable. There was no padding at all. So a metal band and, and sort of mica or whatever it was around your ears was anything but comfortable. Now that gives me the cue to show you a picture I found recently, an old picture of me taken, would you believe, in 1959 and uh, put it up on the screen here, you'll see it on the screen. And I was um, wearing a set of headphones then, old fashioned headphones. And the picture was actually taken to be on the front cover of a RSGB book. I think it was something like the Beginner's Guide to uh, Ham Radio. It was organized by uh, G2BVN, who subsequently was to become the president of the RSGB for um, one or two years around about that time. And uh, uh, we uh, all belonged to the uh, amateur radio club that used to meet at the Raffles Centre in Romford. And uh, Steve there was, um, uh, well, he was quite senior to me, of course. And uh, so he had arranged for this photograph to be taken. And uh, it, was, it, was, uh, it was actually a set up photograph, really. It wasn't my station, um, but uh, it was all set up. And I can't remember what the gear was now. It looked, it looked sort of... Uh, uh, some of it was home built, but anyway, that was that was me in uh, 1959. So now let's actually have a look at the Heil uh, Pro uh, 7. The Heil Pro 7, by the way, that I'm going to look at is the uh, Icon version, and the Icon version comes with an Icon interface lead in the box. Um, the Yesu and Kenwood and other uh, models um, don't have the interface in the box. Um, you have to order that separately, but that is reflected in a slightly uh, lower price. So what I'm going to um, have a look at now is the um, Icon version and um, see what features it has and whether it's right or, or not for you. Well now I'll run through what you get in the box. The first thing to look at is the interface. This is essential to interface the uh, headset to your Icon transceiver. And here you've got the 8-pin connector which goes into the mic socket of your transceiver. Uh, then you've got a quarter inch jack here which is actually the PTT line which I'll come back to in a minute. And then you've got a 3.5 uh, socket input there and that's where the audio comes from the boom mic into there and then travels down into your transceiver. Now interestingly enough you get two leads, you get the straight lead which I've got here and you also get a curly lead. So looking at the straight lead, we've got a 3.5mm plug there. Out of there comes the audio from the boom mic and that goes into the ICOM interface which I showed you just now. Then we've got a quarter inch jack. Quarter inch jack is the headphone connection or headset connection for audio. So that plugs into the uh, headphone socket of your transceiver. If you've only got a 3.5mm connector then you just take the adapter off and that will go into your 3.5mm uh, headphone output on your transceiver. Now the headset itself doesn't 
come with any cables attached. Everything is connected using this six-way multi-connector and that goes into the head, uh, headset. So that takes care of boom mic audio out from the headset and audio from your transceiver into your headset. That's, uh, and that's got a uh, connector there which, which actually locks and I'll show you that in a minute. And to complete the picture here's the curly lead which uh, is an option and uh, you make the choice uh, whether you want a curly uh, lead connection or not and uh, again on there you've got this uh, six pin multi-way connector uh, you've got your headphone um, uh, connection there and you've got the uh, output from the boom mic there both these leads are included in the uh, box now here's something you don't get with the um, lower range of uh, headsets from Harlow you only get this with the Pro 7 a series and that is a PTT um, button and connection. That connector there, the quarter inch connection there, goes into the ICOM interface that I showed you earlier on or whatever other interface you've got but this goes into the um, PTT um, socket on the interface and this is your PTT button it's um, just make or break, there's no latching at all and there's a quite a strong clip there so you clip it to your shirt or your jacket or whatever now here's the headset itself and you'll see that um, I've already connected the lead to it with this six-way multi-pin connected lead. That is firm, that won't pull out at all, but there's a little button there. You press the button and you can just unplug it just like that. Now the headphones themselves um, have got really um, spongy um, earpieces. They're quite thick and uh, they're because they're so spongy they make them quite comfortable. They also give excellent isolation. I measure the isolation as something over 20 dB. Um, Harl claimed as 25 dB, so I guess that they are, uh, the 25 dB is about right. Certainly when you put them on, the he on your head, everything goes silent. Um, you've also got quite a nice spongy headband there. Headband is adjustable on both sides, up and down, and you can lock it there with that... Uh, knurled uh, nut there and then the microphone um, is you can hear it click round there adjustable and it's bendy as well and also you've got an anti-pop filter on the front there so if it's uh, if you're close speaking as you probably will be with a headset there's no popping that occurs now i mentioned about the sound isolation being around about 25 db that may be a bit too much for some people and some people may find that uh, perhaps those pads are a bit thick so in the box are a pair of uh, pads that you can uh, replace. Uh, these ones are a lot thinner, so they wouldn't give so much isolation, but you might find them a bit more comfortable, whatever you prefer. And if you really want to go slim, then there's these two sort of woven um, covers there, uh, which would give you even less isolation. So you've got three choices. You've got the woven ones there, You've got the intermediate ones there, or you can go for the full Monty and have the really thick spongy ones there. Now on one side of the headset we have this uh, balance control, which I'll uh, just talk about for a moment. The balance control on the side is not what you might expect it to be. It doesn't control the signal left to right. All it does is controls the level of the signal from naught to maximum on the left hand headphone um, and when it's at maximum the headsets are balanced so the, sig the signal uh, is central. The idea is that if you have dual VFOs or you have two separate receivers then you can feed left and right separately and once you've adjusted the level on the uh, right hand side you can then adjust the level on the left hand side. So it balances it up in that way, but it's not the balance control that you might um, naturally think. It doesn't go left to right. It's simply a control of the level on the left hand earpiece. On the right hand earpiece, you'll see a socket, a 3.5 millimeter socket. And the purpose of this is that you can plug in another pair of headphones. So if, for example, you're operating in a contest, something like that, uh, where you've got um, an operator and a logger, then the logger can plug his headphones into the uh, uh, socket and monitor exactly what uh, you're listening to. So it's quite a 
sensible idea, I suppose. Well, now we come to the phase control, which is a switch on the right-hand side, and it's got a switch guard around it to protect the switch. And in one position it says in, and the other position it says out. In other words, it switch, switches it in phase or out of phase. So, how does it perform and what does it do? Well, I have to confess, I've never tried these uh, headphones before, this headset before, so I didn't know what to expect from this phase uh, control. Um, as I, as you saw just now, it says phase in and phase out. But I don't think it means out of phase and in phase. I think it means the phase is either in or the phase um, is out. Because when you switch to phase out, it's not too dissimilar from a normal pair of headphones. Uh, everything is basically centered there and uh, you know it's just as you would expect when you put a pair of headphones on but when when you switch to in in other words the phase control is in all of a sudden your whole listening world expands all of a sudden it's got depth to it it's got width to it now it's very difficult for me to describe it you need to listen to it to to appreciate it but basically, if you're tuning around on, say that you're tuning at the CW end of the band, all of a sudden, those signals seem to sort of separate a bit. That it's, if you've got two or three signals in the same passband um, with normal headsets, then they're, they're there and you're trying to sort of listen to them and, and, and to try and sort of ignore some and listen to the, the one you want to listen to. But once you, once you switch the phase control in, all of a sudden they seem to separate a bit. Now, they don't move about as you as you tune, they don't, that's not that effect, but they have spatial um, effect. And it's very pleasant. And I found that when I was tuning around on CW, I really liked having that phase control switched in. It, 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 it made listening more pleasant, um, it was less fatiguing, and I, it, was, it was good. However, if I was listening to a very weak signal and I put, I narrowed the uh, the selectivity, selectivity right down, I think I would switch it off because then I've got a signal right in front of me and I can concentrate on it. The signal I want is there. How does it work on the sideband? Well, of course, the effect is exactly the same. Um, it is pleasant to listen to sideband with the phase control switched on. Again, you've got this spatial effect. It's less fatiguing. Um, however, if you are dealing with a weak signal, um, then if you switch the phase control off, in other words, you switch it out, it gives a certain amount of punch to the signal. Now, it probably replicates what you get on normal headphones. Um, you, you know, the signal is there. But if you switch back to the phase control in, it's more pleasant to listen to, provided the signal is at a reasonable level. I've, I've found it very pleasant, actually. Um, I haven't actually spoken to anybody else that's used them, but I, I can appreciate that it's, it's a really useful feature. Um, but as I say, you need to listen to it to appreciate it. But that's, that's, uh, that's the effect that I experienced, and that's uh, how I interpret it. And, and that's how I tried to pass it on to you. So how do I summarize the Heil Pro 7. Well, I wasn't disappointed. I was impressed with what came in the package. Um, it seems to work well. The microphone response is reasonably flat, which is not a bad thing these days actually, because a lot of transceivers now have got the means of EQing. So a flat um, frequency response from the microphone is, is not, not a problem. It's not bland at all. Um, but uh, I didn't find any problem with it at all. It sounded okay, and uh, if I EQ'd it, I, I got what I e expected. Um, as it comes out of the box, and if you don't EQ it, it's it's fine. I uh, got uh, quite a few reports on the air, and uh, they were all complimentary. Really, there was no no criticism at all. Um, plenty of output from the microphone as well. As regards the headset. Um, there is, as you'd expect, not the same bass response as I would get on my studio uh, 
headphones here that I, I use for mixing. But that again is not a bad thing. It's not dramatic either because I've, I've plugged the, the headset into uh, my uh, mixer here and uh, there, is, there is bass there but it's not as prominent as it would be on a, uh, on a pair of um, a wider range uh, headphones. One interesting thing I did find actually was that when I plugged my studio headset in there which has got quite a wide frequency range and there was noise, you know, the sort of general band noise it was more of a problem because a lot of the noise was had bass content which was doing nothing at all. When I swapped over and put the Heil Pro 7 headset on that bass low le level noise uh, wasn't there at all so it actually made signals easier to copy in, in some ways it got rid of a bit of the noise but that was only by frequency response. Um, uh, again, the response is pretty flat. Um, once you go, once you go sort of above 200, 250 hertz, uh, the response is pretty flat. Again, not a bad thing because at least it enables you to adjust your transceiver, or your receiver frequency response, whether it be IF shift or whatever or EQ. Um, so I think these days a fairly flat response to start with is not a bad baseline to work from. Um, it, uh, you know, it, it means to say that you can, you're in control rather than the headset is telling you what it wants to, you to hear and what it doesn't want you to hear. <laughs> so um, there we are. So yes, uh, the Pro 7 is fine and I would recommend it, I could live with it and uh, it does an awful lot of things. At the end of the day, of course, you may be one of these guys that doesn't like headsets and you prefer to sit in your armchair and listen to coming out the speaker. Fine, that's fine. It's it's almost Marmite again, isn't it? You know, the old Marmite thing. Um, but if you are looking for a headset, then I would certainly recommend the Pro 7. They, they feel nice, they wear nice, they sound nice. Can't say much more than that. So, thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Hope it's been giving you some information, which is why we're running this video channel. In the meantime, take care, stay safe, See you soon.